So now we've done a FITS analysis, and hopefully you've determined that WAVE is an excellent accounting software for your specific business needs. So, the next step, let's jump into WAVE, create a free account for you, and let's get started. To do that, we're going to need to go to the internet and go to their main website, www.waveapps.com. So this is the Wave Apps website. The sign-up process is really simple. It's really only three steps. To get started, you can either put in an email and password on the box off to the left, or click on the sign-up button up at the top. When you click on the sign-up button, you have the option of signing up using your existing Google and Yahoo account. If you want to use their single sign-on feature, you can. Alternatively, you can also put in an email address and password. So that's what we're going to do. And then you can click, let's get started. So step two, we want to put in the company name and the business type. Before we go on, I want to take just a second to talk about the business type field. This business type field is perhaps the most important field in the entire setup process. That's because Wave Accounting will automatically set up for you all your categorizations in an initial chart of accounts. And this initial chart of accounts is determined based on what you put in this business type field. So if you scroll down through the business type field, you'll find that there are several types that are other categorizations. I would encourage you to avoid using these wherever possible. Take a few minutes to carefully read through the business type field and find a type that's as close as possible to the type of business that you're running. The more accurate you can make this field, the better your setup is going to be and the less additional work you're going to have to do to your chart of accounts in order to get Wave Accounting ready for use. Okay, that being said, for today's example, I am going to go ahead and use the other category just to keep things fairly general. So I'm going to say I'm an other consultant. Now the currency, obviously, if you're in the United States, your main currency is probably going to be U.S. dollar. But if you're outside the United States or you operate your main accounting in a different currency than the U.S. dollar, you can come in and change this. So here's the business currency and also the personal currency. You'll learn a little bit later that Wave Accounting enables you to have a separate section specifically for your personal finances that's different from the section where your business finances are located. And you can toggle between the two with a single login. So that's why you have both of those categories available. And finally, if you want to, there are special offers that are offered through their ad-based model. Uh, these are discounts for lots of different types of services and products that may be useful to your business. If you'd like to receive those via email, you can check the box there. Otherwise, let's click continue and move on to step three. So step three is the company's address. You can see up at the top that you can skip this part if you want, but I'm not going to recommend that because you're going to have to come back and fill it in later anyway. The address that shows up here is what's going to appear on all of your invoices, estimates, and any kind of documentation or emails that you send out to your clients. So let's make sure we get that right. So I'm going to come in here and type in my company's address. One, two, three my street. And you can see as I start typing that it's pre-filling the address for me. And believe it or not, my street actually is a street. It's actually a street in several locations. I'm going to say that we're in Havana, Florida. And there you go. It's going to fill in the city, state, and zip for me automatically. And we're ready to move on. And with that, Wave Accounting is set up and you're ready for your initial use. Or so you would think. Even though we've gone through the setup process and Wave Accounting is finished, there's some additional setup that I would recommend that you go through while we're here that's going to help make things easier as you start entering transactions. So first of all, it allowed us to put in the address for our business, but the phone number, website, and things like that were not part of the initial setup. So let's go in and add those. So you can come up here to your account, to your profile, I can come into my businesses. Right now we only have one business, the Accounting Lab. So I'm going to come in and edit that. That's the little blue pencil icon right there. And you can see here's the address that we filled in from our initial setup. But I can add the phone number down here. 
and a mobile if I want. I can also do a website. To do the website, I found that if you don't put the HTTP in front of it, then sometimes it doesn't, Wave Accounting does not recognize it as a website. You might get frustrated there. So be sure to add the HTTP colon slash slash, and then you won't have as much problems. And uh, our company doesn't have any employees, let's say, and we'll go ahead and save. So now all of the contact information for my business has been added in. The last thing I want to do is look at a couple of our preferences. So let's go back to our dashboard. The preferences for your companies are located in what's known as the gear. You can find the gear in the upper right, just above any of the screen that you're on. So you're, you can find it right here. So let's go ahead and click the gear and look at our accounting settings, and we'll go to our financial settings. So this is the financial section in WAVE. From this section, you'll be able to set how you want your dates to appear on your reports and forms. You'll also be able to set your fiscal year-end date. The fiscal year-end date is the official year-end for your accounting of your business. It's also the official year-end date for your taxes. Typically speaking, a fiscal year-end is December 31st. However, if you're a nonprofit, oftentimes it's June 30th. And really, a business can have any fiscal year-end date that it wants as long as it fits the seasonality of the industry that they're in. If you're not sure what your fiscal year-end date is, most likely it's probably December 31st. However, if you want to be sure, you can ask your tax accountant and he will know. So for purposes of today's example, we're going to leave the fiscal year-end date at 1231. And also, this is a SQL standard date format, not very useful for a lot of our reports and forms. I'm going to keep a short numerical date. And we're going to use that for today's example. So let's go ahead and click Save. And those are my financial settings. The other thing that I want to look at really quickly is guest collaborators. As we have started setting up WAVE and using it, we want to make sure that we get all of our team involved. Now, if your team consists of just you, then this isn't really going to be very applicable. But if you've got an external accountant that looks at your books, a tax accountant doing your taxes at year end, or even internal bookkeepers, you want to make sure that they're involved. And as I mentioned before, there's no additional cost of having guest collaborators. So let's go into our guest collaborator section. So you can see that we have our owner's account right there. And you can also see that there's no actions that can be done on that owner's account. It can't be switched, it can't be moved, it's permanent. Let's go ahead and add an additional collaborator. So come up here. And let's add a bookkeeper. And now you really only have two access types for your guest collaborators inside of WAVE. Security is very limited in WAVE accounting. I can either allow them view only or view and edit. So for example, if I have maybe an investing owner that's not actively involved in the business but likes to keep tabs on the books, I can give him view only access. Or if you want to, like with this bookkeeper, he's going to be doing data entry, so I'm going to grant that person view and edit. This message section is where I can type a small message that will be sent in the invitation email so that they know what exactly this is all about. Go ahead and send that. So you can see that the bookkeeper has now been added to my pending collaborators. In order for them to begin using WAVE accounting, they'll need to click on the link inside the email that was sent to them by WAVE and accept my invitation. If they have an existing WAVE account, then they can sign in with that WAVE account and my company will be added to the other companies that they already have. If they don't have a WAVE account, then clicking on the link, they'll be asked to sign up for one. Once they have their account and they've accepted my invitation, then they'll move from pending collaborators up to collaborators and will be granted access to my WAVE account. So let's leave my bookkeeper there for now. There's one last place that I want to stop before we finish this setup tutorial. 
and that's the email preferences. So let's go to email preferences. The email preferences section is pretty cool and it's an often overlooked feature. This is the area where you get to regulate what kinds of communication flow from Wave Accounting to you. What kinds of emails do you want to receive? What kind of information do you want to know? And how frequently do you want to know it? Emails in this section can include things like general overviews of your accounting, alerts and notifications, deals and offers, as well as announcements about new features coming out in WAVE. Take a look through the different checkboxes that are available here and set your preference settings to whatever you feel most comfortable and what kinds of information you want to receive from your WAVE account. I'm going to leave my email preferences where they're at, but since we're in the neighborhood, there is one other thing that I do want to show you, and that's WAVE Labs. WAVE Labs is an environment where WAVE allows you to kind of test drive new features that they're going to be coming out with. If you like to be on the cutting edge and you always want to know what's, what's coming out in WAVE, then you can sign up for WAVE Labs simply by clicking the green Join WAVE Labs button, and you'll be made aware of new features that are coming out, and as they're in their beta testing phase, you'll be able to test drive those features before they're rolled out to the general public. I personally enjoy being part of WAVE Labs and would recommend it if you like having available to you all the latest features. But that's up to you. You can choose whether or not you want to join. Now our initial setup is done, but we're still far from complete. Before we can enter our first transactions, we still need to review the chart of accounts and clean it up, set up the sales and purchasing sections, and link our bank accounts. So stay with us as we go through each of these additional setup processes in the following videos. Thank you for watching the Bootstrapper's Guide to Wave Accounting. If you found this video useful, I encourage you to click the like button below, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and share this video with other entrepreneurs. Doing so will help us to continue creating more videos like this one for you and other Wave users here on the Accounting Lab.